Welcome to Dollars and Cents, hosted by Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. Dollars and Cents is the show about growing more of what you are making, saving more of what you are growing, and making more of what you are growing and saving in the most sensible and tax-efficient manner possible. Feel free to call into our studio number to be live on air with your questions. Call 408-912-5038. That's 408-912-5038. And here is your host of Dollars and Cents, Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. Good evening, friends. This is your own CPA, Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. This is your first uh, show after the tax season. Uh, tax season got over on April 18th. After that, uh, I've been off for last two weeks, last two times uh, show on for various reasons. So I'm here now giving the show every Wednesday. And the time remains the same, 6.30 to 7. In this show, we talk about the tax topics, the tax update, dollar update. And we also talk about the dollar topic of the show. Uh, so we have two segments, which is about one is for dollar update and one the second is a dollar topic of the show. The reason why we have this show, uh, we provide the most recent in financial information for the benefit of the listeners. And also we provide some insight into tax angle that can also help you save taxes and, and grow and double your money that you can do from different aspects which you can bring in the show. In our dollar update today of the show, we know that uh, today Federal Reserve raised its interest rate by the biggest hike, first time in 22 years, by half a percentage point, half a percentage point, as a big jump. That's the most aggressive step they have taken so far. It's a 40-year history. They have, they have bet, they beat that 40-year history, and they have jumped. They are not raising it by 0 0.25. They raised it by 0 0.5. You remember last March they raised by 0 0.25. So now this hike will push the federal funds rate to a range of 0.75 percent to, in fact, around 1 percent. So what will impact your bottom line? This will impact, of course, it will impact your bottom line, right? Uh, it will impact your mortgage rates, your line of credits. For business owners, they get impacted in terms of business line of credit, expensive credit card rates. That's also going to impact from there. So refinancing, People like to refinance a lot in this valley, in this in the country, and uh, that will be hit by this rise in the mortgage rates. Federal Reserve was left with no option but to do this because inflation is climbing up, is climbing up. The consumer prices spiked by 8.5% in March from the year before, the fastest pace since December 1981. <clears throat> Inflation is nowhere the federal goal, federal reserve goal of 2%. And we know if they have gotten worse in recent months. And we know that Russian invasion of Ukraine will make it more difficult to contain the inflations. Everything from food and energy to metals have become very, very expensive. Although we have seen some draw, drawback in the oil prices, but then we know the lockdown, COVID lockdown in China have raised concerns about global demand. The high cost of living is causing financial headaches for millions of Americans, all of us, of course. And this has pushed our president, Joe Biden, their approval ratings have gone down, incredibly low. We really have to see how this is going to control the inflation. That's a very important part. Uh, we have to really have our fingers crossed. I hope this war on Ukraine will come to an end, hopefully. They're talking about May 9th, victory day, as we call for Russia. We don't know what's going to happen then, but we are keeping our fingers crossed and hope and pray to God that this war 
comes to an end and all can live peacefully in this world. This Sanjay Gupta CPA giving up the show, uh, dollars and cents every Wednesday. Listeners, you have a tax question. You can call. The studio number is 408-912-5038. 408-912-5038. That's the studio number you can call 408-912-5038. My firm, Sanjay Gupta CP, has offices in Fremont, Sunnyvale, and Pleasanton. And I have a great team who have helped a lot of clients during this last tax season. In fact, they have been working day and night during tax time. Now they have I've given them some, some time off. Some people have gone to India to spend their time with their families. Of course, that's a good time. Of course, in India, by the way, in Delhi particularly, the weather is so hot. It's climbing, it's making news. It's 42 degrees Celsius, so it's very hot out there. And COVID also cases are rising in that, uh, in that country. And of course, in the US, you can see the jump in the COVID cases as well. We have a caller here. Let me take this call. Good evening, this is Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. Sir, how are you? I'm fine. Everything is fine. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you or for you? your time. Thank you for your time. We really enjoy your show. I no have a problem, question sir. on the foreign yeah. account. Uh, uh -huh. I just got my green card last year. Mm -hmm. And I have a joint account with my sister over there because she lived by herself. My name is on the account. I still have yes. to declare that income in my tax returns. See, oh, yeah? that's where the, our problem is. We What happens in India, we try, we open joint accounts, whether it's with the parent, whether it's with the siblings. And in India, that does not matter because joint account everybody goes for it because it really helps in India. But when it comes to foreign account reporting from the US point of view, joint account means one or anyone can take control of that account. If that is the case, uh, it's important that you, even if you're joint account with a sister in India, you still have the power to use that account. And that means that becomes an important asset for reporting on the FPAR and 8938. So I will suggest to you, advise you or request you to uh, to take your name out from the joint account if you don't want that money or don't want the, your, to report that one as soon as possible uh, and trying to take that name out from that account. And then that way, in that case, you don't have to report it. Okay. And if I want to keep it, then I have to report it every time and I have to yes. pay tax on that. I'm not making yes. any interest or anything on that account. No, no, you don't have to pay tax. That's the another part. So reporting an account does not mean that you have to pay tax on an account. It's more about reporting the account on FBAR or 8938, that's nothing to have taxes on income. If you make income, they, of course you have to pay taxes. But if there's no income on in that account, you don't have to worry, it's just reporting. Reporting does not mean you have to take, uh, you have to pay taxes, more about compliance, not income reporting, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, really appreciate your call. Listeners, no, I appreciate your time, thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Listeners, if you have any tax question, any more tax question, definitely, so this is Sanjukta CPA bringing the show, 408-912-5038. 408-912-5038 is the studio number. So I was talking about my firm, my people that uh, I was telling you all that my people have gone, some of them gone to India. Uh, so I am very blessed to have a very educated people and very trained, motivated people in my office. Uh, I have no words then to express my gratitude to all of them who work day and night to get this tax season going. And moreover, this tax season was tough tax season, was not a normal tax season. We have been telling this for last several years, for the last two years because of COVID, a lot of changes have happened in the tax rules and regulations. Even the IRS is backed up. Millions of tax returns are still to be processed. Millions of tax returns are still to be processed. And if you call the IRS, you know what is going to happen. They are, you will be online for in queue for hours and days. Still, they are struggling it, but they are going. They are going to be efficient in. That's what they're saying. They tell us that the system they are improving. Maybe two three months from now, you will see much faster, much happier IRS. Their website has been changed. You can create a tax account on their website, and you can get a lot of information online. I have a call here. Let me take this call. Good evening, this is Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, this is a Sandeep. Yeah, I have a quick two questions. So, on the capital gains from the stock, if I don't earn more than thousand dollars, do I need to report that? 
Oh, yeah. In this country, you report even a single dollar. There's nothing tax free okay. in this country. Okay. And, okay, thank you. And my next question was regarding the F bar. So I, so I saw online that if it is less than $10,000 in the foreign account, we don't have to report that. Is that correct as well? Okay, so let me make you understand what is FBAR. FBAR is a foreign bank account report for listing all the foreign financial assets. What are those foreign financial assets? Those are foreign bank accounts, uh, which checking, saving, RD, CD, uh, all kinds of fixed deposits. Okay. And then we have a mutual funds, and then we have PPF accounts. Then we have all kinds of liquid investments like mutual fund, uh, UTIs, ICCI potential, life insurance policies. So we combine all those things and then we see the balances in all of them. If the balances in all of them is more than $10,000, that means you have to file the FBAR, you have to report all the asset in that place. If the balance is less than $10,000, then you don't have to report on the FBAR. So it's not one item, it's together. So if one item is more than 10000 of course you have to report everything. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. Really appreciate for your call. I have one more caller here. Let me take this call. Good evening, this is Sanjeev to CPA. Hello. Hello, sir. Good evening, this is Sanjeev to CPA. Hi, Mr. Hi, Sanjeev. Uh, I have a quick question on investment property. On on which so, property? Uh, investment property. Oh, investment property. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So I have somebody told me like you know that if you are looking to buy, I have already have two, but I'm looking to buy an investment property, and if I travel to a city. Then you know I can uh, take up, I can uh, deduct those charges. You know, like the flight and the hotel. Yeah, is that is that correct? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Is is a you can deduct those expenses, provided that's important. Everything in taxes is, uh, says you can do this, but but again, what is the but here? So according to the regulations, when you travel for when you when you want to book those travel expenses. Or rental properties or investment properties, you have to make sure that you are traveling for purpose of looking at that property for looking for either putting on rent or putting some improvement to those property. If you do, if you're doing that and you're traveling, majority of that travel should be related to that investment to, to that property. If you're traveling for family purposes or other things, and because of that you're also going and visiting that property. Uh, so you have to take out a proportion of the, your expenses, of your travel expenses relating to that property. If you, for example, let's say you're paying thousand dollars. I'm just giving you an idea. Just you're paying thousand dollars a day travel ticket, and you spend uh -huh. a, a couple of a couple of day, uh, one day for property, and the rest of you are doing family and other things. Uh, so you can take out right. like one tenth of your travel cost, and also you can have a picture and everything. Uh, so that way you can uh, you can uh, you can justify that expense, but definitely you can claim that. But like I said, you have to justify that expense, validating the documentation that is a valid expense for a deduction. But you definitely can take it on your tax return. Okay. Got it. Got it. And can I ask one more question? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead with your question, please. Yeah. So I have a, like you know, if I have a property like let's say in Sacramento, and you know I'm I don't have a property manager, but I'm going I go there um, back and forth. So is that something like I can deduct again as property management, uh, you know, hours or expenses? Yes, you can definitely do that. You just keep a mileage record of the travel uh, from here to there. Of course, you can uh, deduct 50 cents or 55 cents per mile. They keep changing adjusted inflation. You keep a okay. mileage log. And is there a number of one. hours, like any minimum number of hours that you need to have or it just depends on the mileage? No, no. For auto expenses is based on mileage. For Claiming okay. that loss as an active business loss is based upon your number of hours you're spending for that property, and that is huge. That is 750 hours in a year, which you will not qualify. But for claiming right. that auto expenses, you can just claim a mileage. You can claim mileage based on your travel. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate for the call. And listeners, if you have any questions, tax questions, we are getting so much so good tax questions on on here. That's making a day for me. So definitely uh, call me, call in with your tax questions, 408-912-5038. 408-912-5038 is your studio number. Coming to my people, my staff in the office, uh, uh, I have to, uh, 25 people in my office and working in different three lo locations, Fremont, Sunnyvale, and Pleasanton. And they, we speak multi-languages and we are not only available to any tax season, we are available the year round. So it's not that our offices are closed, they are people working. 
entered up. So if you have any tech, if you have any question or you want to set up a consultation time with me, you can set, you can call me in my office. One number is 510-825-7563. 510-825-7563 is our, my office number where you can connect to all the three offices and set up a consultation with me. Myself, not only a CPA, but also an experienced chartered accountant, having practiced in India for 12 plus years, before coming to us and uh, like i said my firm has been dealing with all types of complexities and i've i've been uh, i've been fortunate that all my filings have been so far been select will have been approved by the irs means we do, we do get notice we do get completion notices from the irs so we are very fortunate to have that and we value our quality of the work that we do and the knowledge that our people have working in the firm. I have a caller here. Let me take this call. Good evening, this is Sanjeev to CPA. Hello, sir. Good evening. Approved by Diane. Uh, good evening, Gupta. My name is Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Uh, how are you? Uh, uh, Gupta I have this question around my India accounts. I have two uh -huh. accounts in India which are like you know, savings account and all that. I am trying to convert all of them into uh, NRO or NRE account. Mm -hmm. um, now the question that I have is how, once they are converted, I mean, is there any limit on conversion in the sense some accounts which cannot be converted like PPF or anything like that, or pretty much every account can be converted uh, into, um, you know, NRO. That is my first question. And second is, um, if I want to repatriate all the funds in all those accounts to U.S., is there any limit? I have paid taxes, et cetera, et cetera, in India. So is there any limit for you? Okay. So for answer to the first question is, can all the account be converted to NR or NRE? Answer will depend upon the nature of the account. For example, like, like, you, like you rightly said, the PPF account is cannot be converted to NRO NRE account. It's a 15-year account and uh, it's meant for tax purposes in India. So yeah. cannot convert it. But all the other accounts, of course, yeah, they have to convert to NRO NRE account. If you're not converted it, you're violating the RBI regulations. You're violating the FEMA requirements in India. You definitely have to convert. If you're non-resident and have been outside India for more than two years, you're considered non-resident for tax purposes. And once you are for FEMA requirement and RBI regulations, you have to convert. I still see people having those uh, checking account and semi account in their maiden name or in their uh, before marriage name or XYZ name or this name or that name. But I'm, I'm honestly telling all of you, if you're listening to my show, please convert those account immediately to NRO and NRE account. And if you have an income from India, do file the return in India if it's above the taxable limit. But answering to your question, and definitely you can, some of the account can be converted, it's like bank account can be converted, but not account like PPF. And limit on remittances from India, you can bring up to $250,000 if you are a green card holders, not US citizen. Being a US citizen, you can bring up to a million dollar from there in one Indian financial year. Uh, Indian financial year runs from April 1st to March 31st, okay? Okay, okay, Gupta thank you so much. And what to do with the PF account, which is running right now? Uh, you know, I have not completed my 15 years. Uh, so uh, what should I, I do always with tell, that? Uh, yeah, I always tell my client, if you can do it, close that account. No use of just keeping that open. If they allow you for uh, initial, uh, well, I've, I've seen that they will not allow, but in case they allow you, uh, close it. If not, just uh, let, let the 15 year period run out and then you can close it. Okay. Thank you, Gupta Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate for the call. Listeners, if you have any tax questions, I'm a, this is Sanjukta CPA. Bring these dollars and cents show every Wednesday. Studio numbers, studio lines are open 408 912 Let's go to our dollar topic of the show. So, dollar topic of the show today, I'm going to talk about extensions, tax extensions and amendments. Why I'm taking this extension? Of course, the tax season is over. You filed extension. Now what now? Why are you talking about extension? The reason why I'm taking this extension is because a lot of times what happens is when we file extension, we don't know whether the IRS has accepted the extension or not. We are under the, under the always the belief that we filed the extension, our extension has been approved by the IRS, but that's not the case most of the time. And what, what happens most of the time, you receive a letter from the IRS saying, uh, when you file the return, you get a letter with penalties because you did not file the extension on time or did not file a, a, a proper extension. 
What do you mean by proper extensions? Your social security number may be wrong. Your name might be wrong. I just don't communicate all those things to you. So what I do suggest to all my clients is, even if you have filed extension, make sure you call the IRS and make sure they have extension on the file. If not, please go ahead and file the return as soon as possible. You don't want to pay that extra penalty interest every month. By the way, the month after extension deadline, the, the penalty interest multiplies 1.5 times the normal interest rate and penalties, which people don't know. And they, they get shocked when they get those notices. So just remember that if you, if you don't assume something, do call the IRS and find out whether the extension is in their record. That's number one. Number two, if you are if you are going if you're making a tax payment with the tax extension, make sure the money has been taken out from your bank. That also is important. Don't just keep waiting and waiting and waiting for the IRS to uh, to come back uh, with notices with the, with the penalties and interest. Do call the IRS now. Of course, calling the IRS is different ballgame, but you want to save money, right? You want to save money. So that's you have to do the hard way of calling the IRS, making sure uh, that you get this payment. I have a caller on hold. Let me take this caller. Good evening, this is Sanjay Gupta CPA. Hello, sir. Good evening, this is Sanjay Gupta CPA. Hi, good evening, Sanjay Ji. Thank you good for evening, taking Jay. the call. Uh, no problem. Question about FBAR. Um, mm -hmm. Three years ago, I took a life insurance policy. How do I convert that into an amount in dollars and check if it all is about 10,000 or less than 10,000? So when we talk about insurance policies, we don't care about their face value. We don't care about how, how much premium you're paying. Okay, what we care is the cash surrender value. What do you mean by cash surrender value? Cash surrender value is equal to the value you will get today if you surrender that policy. And how will determine that value? You have to call, you can easily call the IRS, you can, not IRS, sorry, the IRS is in my mind. Uh, the, you can call the insurance company and find out what is my value today when it's under a policy. That value is your important value. And that value, you should put it on FBAR 8938. Now, call, if you don't get that value, you can do a real reasonable estimation based on premiums paid. There are certain formulas we use for determining that. But generally, you can call the insurance company and get that cash surrender value, which is an important asset, needs to be reported on the FBAR 8938. Okay? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I think I understood now. Okay. Uh, one other quick question. Um, mm -hmm. I have an investment property, and uh, mm -hmm. the income that I make on that um, or the expenses, uh, can I claim on my personal taxes? Uh, expensive on rental property. Yeah, you can claim on the rental property side, not on your personal side. You cannot claim expenses as setting up your income, but you can set up your rental income. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate for the call. And uh, like I said, uh, everybody, uh, this thank you for your call. And uh, we will touch base next Wednesday, same time, 637. Take more of your questions and we'll come back, come with more important topics. Uh, I have one more caller here. Let me take this quickly. Is possible to take the call? Good evening, this is Sanjeev Gupta CPA. Yeah, I can take this call. Hi, uh, hi, sir. Uh, actually, I have a question. Like I just was listening to your show. Uh, you said for FBAR declaration, we also have to declare our ICICI Prudential investments. Yes, because those are valuable assets. Okay. Okay, and it should not be only NRE and NRO account. It should be all the mutual funds and ICICI as well. Yes. And I, well, again, depends upon their schemes. You have to connect with them. I'm not a financial investor in, in India, so maybe you can connect with them and find out. But those are important assets, which needs to be reported on FBAR and Form 8938. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate for the call. And... Uh, just to we are coming to close of this show and just want to thank all of you to listening to my show every Wednesday and I will be back with more things next Wednesday dollars and in my dollars and cents show. Thank you. high earnings coming from the exercise or sale of RSUs, ESPPs or ISOs or if you are having substantial gains from the stock market or real estate and are looking for ways to significantly reduce your tax liabilities by taking the full benefits available under the TCGA and CARES Act, then set up a consultation appointment before the 2020 tax year runs out. Call Sanjeev Gupta CPA today at 510 825 
5163 that's 5108257563 or visit sanjeevcpa.com If your business has made a lot of profit and you are looking for ways to substantially reduce your tax liabilities by taking the full benefits available under TCGA and the CARES Act, then set up a consultation appointment before the 2020 tax year runs out. Call Sanjeev Gupta CPA today at 510-825-7563. That's 510-825-7563.